For those uh, watching, uh, to my left is Cam Darcy and, and Chris Rawlings. Uh, obviously very pleased with the, the outcome of the game. We thought our guys played really well. Good, pre good premonition early when I, I'm a little bit superstitious and I heard uh, the song from uh, Journey, uh, Don't Stop Believing, which is a song that uh, I heard when I was with the Penguins in Game 7 in Detroit when we beat the Red Wings. So, so I, when I heard that song, I actually felt it was a pretty good feeling going in the game. Um, I hope our band plays a little bit more often. But uh, I thought our, our, our kids really played well from, from the beginning of the game uh, to the end of the game. I thought we managed situations very well. There was a poise and a composure that our team demonstrated. Um, that's a great, obviously, opponent. They're a national champion, three, three or four years national champion, uh, well-coached, uh, great players and just pleased that we came up with the victory. And, you know, it's only two games, but it allows us now to continue building the foundation and um, happy with uh, our effort in the win. Jimmy, can you, I know nothing's won in October. I haven't said that. Still a big feather in your cap for, for you guys to go out there and, and, and beat a team that held like DC. Yeah, no, uh, and you're right, Nance, it's the, first, the first part of your question, nothing's won in October and we've got a long way to go. Um, you know, this is just a, it's a nice victory, there's no doubt, uh, for our team. And, you know, one of our focuses this year was to have a, a good start to the season and, and focus in on the first 10 games of the year. So game two is part of that 10-game focus for us. And, you know, our club the last couple of years has gone off to some slow starts and it's hampered our either our playoff spot or not getting in the playoffs. So, um, you know, we're worried about what happens later in the year, but uh, we'll just continue now looking to game three, which happens to be, again, back against Boston College. Yeah, no, I was happy with uh, the second period. You know, when we can stay in a five-on-five five situation, you know, we like we like the way our team plays and plays down below the goal line. And uh, wh where it gets a little scrambly for us is when we obviously get into a man-down situation. And they're a very good team. It didn't take them long to score in that power play, you know, because they got guys who can zip it around. Uh, so we want to get out of that out of the, those situation scenarios as much as we can. And we want to uh, five-on-five. Five, you know, we like getting into that rhythm routine of all, all uh, four lines going. So, um, you know, I, you're, the game's going to ebb and flow as, you know, each, each night out here, and we just got to be able to manage, uh, you know, the lows and then, uh, you know, take advantages of when we're, uh, we're on the high. Chris, being a goaltender, you know, every guy gives up goals that they wish they could have back over the course of a career. But when you look at the way you guys' third goal went in, very unusual to, that that goal would go in. Can you speak to just how fluky sometimes those things can be? I mean, he, I mean, yeah, it might look look uh, fluky, but uh, you know, he put the puck on net, and it took a funny, funny bounce or dip, I guess you could say. I didn't really see it actually, um, but apparently, kind of, it was like a change up almost. But hey, those things happen. Um, but hey, good things happen when you put the puck on net, and it worked out for for Colton. Cam, what's it like for you on your second collegiate? Um, it's an amazing experience. Uh, my whole life, I <coughs> always dreamed of playing college hockey in Boston, and always grew up watching Northeastern, BU, BC, and then to now be at Northeastern and beat a team like BC, especially when they're ranked number one, it's just almost a dream come true. You played in this building last year, not quite as many fans in attendance. What was it like to have this crowd? as loud as they were for 60 minutes? Uh, it was great. Um, I've never been in a college rink that's been as loud as it was tonight ever, so it was a pretty cool thing to see. <clears throat> Coach, can you just speak to the contributions of your session? Yeah, that's, that's an often asked question. Uh, and. You know, I think I've been pretty consistent with answering it. You know, I, I like our freshman class, and, and Cam sent to the left of me is is one of those freshmen. And we have, you know, um, Kevin Raw, and we have Dax Lowers and Colton Sauceman, and you know, they were all in the score sheet again today. Um, but I, you know, I like our blend of players. I like our leadership with you know, my far left with Chris and Vinny Sapineri and Cody Ferrio and Drew Element and. Uh, Robbie Vrol, like you know, I can go on. Ludwig Carlson, and uh, so it's a good mixture. Um, and I think 
our upper, not think, I know our upperclassmen are helping those freshmen with the adjustment and the transition. And our freshmen are picking up things up pretty quickly. So they're learning fast. We're putting them in the situations where they have to learn quickly, and, and they've shown that they, they've responded. So, um, you know, this league, you need contributions from freshmen if you're going to be successful. I think you can look at the team that we just played tonight. You know, they've got freshmen who were very successful last year. Uh, we need the same thing, and, and you know, early in the year we're getting it. It's a long season. Uh, and we're going to continue to go game by game. Can you uh, shed any light on what the, the confusion at the end of the game was about there? Well, there was a match penalty at the end that was assessed um, to one of the players and um, on the opposition team, and um, and I, I just didn't care for for the penalty, and I, I didn't see a, a hand go up, so I was just wondering if it was a penalty. So um, that's what ended up happening.